Okay, everyone, this, uh, this is Ben Holmes again, coming back for another video. Today we're going to do joysticks. So, uh, just plug in your joystick. Any USB uh, compatible joystick will do. Um, I happen to be using just a Logitech one, but we've tested Logitech, Microsoft, doesn't seem to make any difference. So, um, <clears throat> first thing I do is I get my project set up. I've got my fixtures, so I'm going to open my fixtures. Uh, today's was specifically asked to be an Alation Design Spot 250. So just double click that. I'm just going to add it in here to the first one. Um, I'm also going to, not going to use an audio track today. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And I'm going to give you some a little bit of uh, assistance on how I go about setting up a moving head um, spot uh, or wash, any, basically any moving head uh, fixture to be able to use it inside of Venue Magic. I do it a little bit differently um, to help me kind of distinguish where things are and, and kind of keep things together uh, in a logical uh, pattern for me. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is create a few lamp tracks here. Um, first one I'm going to call Control. If I can spell control, oh, go in, O L. There we go. Second one, I'm going to do movement. Then I'm going to do color, gobo. And for this particular light, I'm also going to do one for the iris. Because there's a, because that's um, allows you to set the size of the uh, spot when it gets to the end. So then I just start dragging uh, channels into the individual tracks. So color obviously goes to color, gobos goes to gobos, focus I put on the control track, frost filter I'm gonna put on control because I don't want to use it very much. Have a second gobo channel, put that there. Iris, we're gonna put on iris. Lamp off uh, for reset internal programs goes there. Level control. Actually, let's add another track for level control. And we're gonna call this dimmer. Put that up there. Level goes to dimmer. Pantelk speed goes to control. Position goes to movement. Prism and macros, we're going to put on control. Rotating gobo index, uh, let's put that on there. And shutter strobe control, I'm going to put on dimmer as well. So that's kind of the way I go about. I just kind of try to match them up into general categories. And what this does is it allows me to put more than one moving head on, a, on the same track and be able to copy and paste between them quite easily doesn't fill up the track list very much uh, makes it a lot easier to go about so uh, the next thing I'm going to do is actually set up my uh, joystick so I'm actually going to use show you the joystick through the virtual control surface so what I've got here is I've got a group I'm going to rename my group to be design spot 250 and change this first channel to be pan and we're going to do external control source select we're going to pick from the list joystick interface and I'm just going to move the joystick to the right and left okay so notice it's got the a little bit of a um, competition here for whether it's the R axis which is the rotational axis on my joystick or the x-axis but I at least know which joystick number Windows is recognizing it as so I'm gonna go ahead and just click X position here double click on it selects it click OK now if you notice that I when I move my joystick it's actually moving up and down and centers in the center just like the joystick would I'm gonna add a new slider for tilt external control source select move it up notice I don't have quite as much competition on up and down as I do right and left 
and pick the Y position and there it is so now I've got my tilt and my pan you can see both parameters moving in co uh, coordination as I move my joystick around okay second thing we're gonna do is go into channel routing this is a nice simple way to just kinda test and make sure your channels work correctly pick my joist uh, pick my virtual control surface here to assign out pan and we're going to just assign it straight to the design spot 250 pan channel and what that does is that allows us to uh, basically control the the send whatever information I'm doing on my joystick straight out to the uh, design spot so click OK there uh, click OK input channel pick my tilt on my virtual control surface put my tilt here click OK click OK. You probably noticed a couple of other things I'm not going to cover in this tutorial um, which have to do with override and, and some additional features that we've been adding recently. So click close here and now literally what happens is when you when I move the joystick the pan and tilt of the light are going to also move but by assigning it to the virtual control surface I can also use the virtual control surface to kind of override the joystick as well um, or as a different method as well so if my joystick uh, go, gets unplugged accidentally or whatever in the middle of a show I can always grab the virtual control surface and uh, do the adjustments there okay so now that I actually have the, those things in line let's go ahead and set up the actual uh, level controls to be able to adjust these things. Now for the most part I use level controls in dealing with moving headlights with the exception of the movement channel. So I'm going to go ahead and do control here and I'm going to set my focus for my design spot at about 50 percent which works in the room that I'm in. Uh, prism and macros I'm going to leave as is notice you can see here you've got all sorts of different macros and prism and all of that kind of stuff I'm just going to leave it as add open frost filter click on a point 0 to 100 percent opening pulse uh, fast to flow I'm just going to leave the frost filter at 0 for now and pan tilt speed I always leave it at 0 which on most lights is maximum speed. Uh, Venue Magic will actually control the speed of the moving headlight itself. Um, so this pan tilt speed is is uh, pretty much pointless in dealing when you deal with it, uh, Venue Magic. So I'm gonna hit, click OK. Next for dimmer, I'm gonna drag another level control over. Expand this out to one minute, and obviously this can be as long or as short as you want. I'm going to go ahead and set my level to maximum. This is my dimmer inside that's built into the light. And then for shutter strobe control, I have to set that to shutter open. So we go shutter open here. And then click on this one and shutter open. And so we actually have the shutter open full um, uh, as well so those two are really important to turn on your light if you don't know how to turn on your light already um, just for a little simple demo I like to actually draw, drag a dot to dot pattern in and just click play at this point and I'll actually see the light moving around um, and be able to exactly see that now during uh, while the lights moving around if I'm doing playback and I move my joystick all I'm doing is kind of setting the upper limit for the movement. I'm not actually overriding the dot to dot pattern. That's done with the uh, the channel routing functionality. I'll show show that in a different tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Drag a level control over here. Move this out, and let's say I just want a nice slow speed. So slow sweep across the room. So I'm going to t set my tilt at about 40 or 45 percent um, and then I'm going to set tell it to sweep 
the entire, uh, in this case, 540 degrees around uh, over the one minute. So it's going to be a very, very slow sweep, um, and that's literally how you would program it. Now, the other option that you have is you can actually record your joystick movements. So I'm going to go here into Properties, Set Up Recording. I'm going to Enable Recording, Erase Before Recording, because I actually just set that up. I can also set which channels to enable recording. And I can actually match my inputs from channel routing, because I already set that up. Okay, So we're going to record these two channels. Click OK. Come back click, notice it says record enabled on that particular clip, click play, and now as I move my joystick around, it's actually going to record my movements as I actually move that around. So you can see here, I'm moving it, right now I'm moving it in big fast circles, or an actual circle instead of just going to the corners. I'll stop that. And you can actually see here, I actually have recorded a waveform of exactly the movements I did on the joystick. Awesome, awesome feature within uh, DMX AV. So click close. Gonna go ahead and set my color. There we go. Extend that out, and for color, I want to start at white. I then want to go to green, and have it then jump to, uh, well, let's see. Let's pick from here. Pink. And notice I'm not actually jumping here, so I can actually select those, click step, and you can now see that they're actually stepped transitions which will let the gobo wheel move as quickly as possible at another point and let's actually go back to blue at another point and orange is good okay same thing with the gobo and I can actually copy this and paste it on the gobo channel and it will actually match up um, it actually matched it up to fixed gobos so you get a variety of different things you can actually do with Venue Magic. And then let's do the iris. And we're going to open the iris all the way up. Iris I could have put on the control channels, but sometimes it's fun to do um, lamp effects with the iris. So go ahead and open this up. Iris dia dynamiter, diameter, let's go, there we go. Maximize, notice the range value. We're going to maximize that to 100% right there. Or as close to 100% as you can get with a mouse. Bing. And click OK. And now, right now, we actually have a fully functional moving head show for our Design Spot 250. Okay. Basic programming, but you get I think you can get the point and be able to move forward from here. Stop that, and let me know if you have questions below.